So just like there's a gravity equation in physics, there's a gravity equation in economics. And this all comes from uh, merely you know, observation. Like we observe, like we just saw, that the main trading partners of Denmark are countries that are close to Denmark, but they are big. And so the idea here is that the trade flows, not the force of gravity between two countries, you can think of that just as exports or the sum of exports and imports, is proportional to the country's masses. What is the mass in economics term by GDP? So the trade is proportional to the product of the two countries' GDPs and inversely proportional to the distance between these two countries. That is the gravity equation. But the easiest possible way to think about the gravity equation in theoretical terms is with the model of last time. And so you import more from a country that's big because that country offers more varieties available for consumption. Okay. You know, Sweden offers 5% of the varieties produced worldwide. In Germany, the remainder 95%. If you like all varieties the same, you're going to import 95% of your imports from Germany and the other five from Sweden. If we look at this equation here, okay. Put it to the data, so we estimate an n year and explain it to the level of distance. And then we do it for the trade flows between US states and Canadian provinces. So we plot trade on the vertical axis. Notice here this particular scale, which is a log scale. And on the horizontal axis, we plot this gravity term. Okay, this GDP1 times GDP2 divided by the distance to a certain power. Okay, we have GDP of, say, you know, a red dot here is the trade flows between, say, California and British Columbia. Okay? And here we have the product of, between the GDP of California and British Columbia divided by their distance to the power of 1.5. So this is a tremendous successful empirical relation. Just by knowing the GDP between two places and their distance, we can very precisely predict how much they're going to trade. In any case, what is surprising about this? Well, when the product of the GDP is divided by the distance to the 1.25 is equal to 1, the level of trade is 93 million. Why don't we pick that one? It doesn't really matter, just to pick one from there, okay? Now tell me, without going ahead on this slide. So suppose now that I show you exactly the same figure just for the trade between Canadian provinces. So forget US and Canada, just look at Canadian provinces. So the trade flows between Alberta and British Columbia. To plot that plot, Selecting only the trade between Canadian provinces. And you take the point in which the product of two GDPs divided by the distance equals one. How much are we going to get? More than 93, less than 93. How many times is that? How many times is 1300 divided by 93? 13 times, roughly speaking. So it's tremendously much more, okay? So just the mere fact that you cross the border is basically adding a lot of trade costs. What are these trade costs? Well, they're several. Some trade costs come from policy. So we're talking about tariffs, quotas, regulation differences, which we're gonna talk about in part in what comes next. Then there are geographic factors that are not perfectly captured by distance. And then there are also cultural factors, which are uh, always very surprising sometimes. 